We've only done it a few times. Bye! Hey, it's exciting to have a red sparkling with an Italian descent because, you know, the Italians know how to make red bubbles pretty well, right? Lambrusco. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'm, okay, I've let's never do it. So ready. This is mozzarella curd. Okay. Just, just cheese curds. What the curd is, is just whole milk. Yep. And then we warm it up and we add something called rennet. I put a lot of cracked black pepper. I don't import olive oil from Italy. I only use well, California olive oil. Well, we have such an amazing. What do you think of California olive oil in general? But you I know what I may do? I'm going to go for the purity. Go for the purity. First. I'm such a pure boy. <laughs> mm. Mm. Buongiorno! Buonasera. I rarely speak Italian, but tonight we're going to have to. This is so exciting because I'm actually in Nash Codventi phenomenal kitchen. He has many, and you're gonna meet him in a second. He is the all-time star of Napa Valley. And I'm excited because for once he's not French, and second, he's created some of the most amazing recipe here in Napa Valley. He's worked at some of the best places, started with his family when he was 12 years old on the East Coast. Move to California, follow like many of us do, including myself, the California dream, and then join Travinia and became the experts of so many things from pizza to incredible Italian dishes and his fantastic mozzarella. So tonight with Chef Nash, we are at his unbelievable destination, Triposti, where you can get married, you could get divorced, you can get buried, or you could do anything you want. The key is to be with him. So dear friends, help me to welcome Chef, Chef Nash. Look at that, oh, oh, oh. he's scared, look at that. No, 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 I know, you know what you're doing. If anyone Sometimes. knows what they're doing, it's you. We've only done it a few times. Bang! Look at this. Hey, Chef, what a view. Gorgeous. We are looking. We are on Highway 29? Right in the heart of St. Helena. Wow. Downtown St. Helena in Napa Valley, and we're happy to be here. Salute. So, salute, amore, tutti, sexo, e passionata, <laughs> e mozzarella. <laughs> hey, it's exciting to have a red sparkling with an Italian descent, because you know, the Italians know how to make red bubbles pretty well, right? Lambrusco. That's it? Yep. Hey, that's the closest to it. This one, believe it or not, is from Alexander Valley, and it's from Waddle Creek. So let's redo this. Salute. Salute, Sante. Buonasera. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you look at the other person in the eye, Nash, when you cheer? I always heard it's bad luck. I heard that there's some sort of that's streak it? of abstinence if you don't. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that, fo that follows. If you don't, if you don't clink with everybody and you don't look them in the eye, then there's maybe it's an old wives' tale. There's some sort of streak of abstinence that comes afterwards. And so we make sure that that doesn't happen. So <laughs> did you see that? Dear friends, did you hear that as you're cheering this summer? Make sure you remember. So Chef Nash, born Italian. Born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, actually, but my family is is from Calabria in Ooh. southern Italy. So, down at the toe of the boot. It seems that that's where a lot of great dish were invented, Calabria. This is uh, the one of the poor regions of Italy. So yeah. you know, it's like la cucina povera, the kitchen of the poor. And so I think that now a lot of those dishes that were looked down upon for so many years are now the most famous dishes and Very fancy true. restaurants, correct? Yeah. So born in Pennsylvania, tell us a little bit about how you become one such a charming man. <laughs> we'll discover that even more. I've known Nash for a long time, as well as such a talented chef. And, and maybe even before those two, how did you develop your passion for food and, and, and why so early? I started, and my family owned a produce company. Mm. And so in my family, going back generations to my father and, you know, all my uncles, it was required that you work at the produce company, unloading trucks of fantastic produce from California, mostly. Yes. Um, 
And so at the age of 12, I guess it was fifth or sixth grade, I started at the produce company unloading trucks of watermelons and tomatoes and grapes and everything that came from Florida and California. And so that kind of was an introduction to me to food, huh. really. And you know, what Would you is- you steal a few in the you cannot little help. box? You can't help. And you taste? How could you not when a, when a truck of strawberries comes in from Watsonville, California? Yeah. Yeah, it's one for them, one for me, one for them, one for me. Of course, of course. Did you get punished for doing that? Never, never. That was one of the perks. What was, is the most terrible thing? There's only a few thing. perks to unloading trucks. <laughs> is, is there a story you want to share as the most terrible thing you've done as you work for your family business? The, the one that sticks out to me is the watermelon trucks. Because uh -huh. the watermelon trucks would come in and they would come from Mexico and you would have to get inside the truck. There were the open top trucks sure. that you see going down the road. And so you would actually have to jump in the truck, grab these watermelons and throw them up over your shoulder to the guy who was standing on the dock. And he would catch them and he'd put them in a bin. Every bin holds 50 watermelons. So you'd go one, <laughs> two, and you'd start in the morning doing this, unloading the truck of watermelons. It's a pretty good exercise. Pretty good exercise. Is that how you got a beautiful shoulder? That's, and, that's how we got you know, bulky. Here. Pectoral muscles up so there? So it would take you all day to unload a truck of watermelons. Mm -hmm. All day in the summertime, you'd be throwing watermelons up to the guy on the, on the dock, sometimes a thousand watermelons in a truck. Wow. But the good thing about it, and what, taught, what it taught me was at the end of the day, when you were beat up and you were dying from unloading all these watermelons, my cousin Joe, who ran the produce block, would come over and he'd say, nice job, and he would hand you a $100 bill. Wow. And so that evening, it's... if you're 14 years old or 15 years old and you go out with your friends, yeah. and all your friends don't have money to go to the movies and they don't have money to do anything, guess who's got a couple Benjamins in his pocket? <laughs> the guy who unloads watermelons all day. And so it taught me a valuable lesson sure. at the age of 13 and 14, which is sometimes you got to bust it, yeah. but in the end, it's worth it. For sure. Right? So did he get you lucky many times with that $100 Benjamin? Uh, not all the guys had $100 bills in their pockets. I'm sure it didn't hurt, you know? <laughs> so He was the star. <laughs> so now, how did you develop your passion for cooking? So I, w I went to school, college at University of Vermont, and I got mm. a bachelor's degree in business management. And while I was in college, I worked in a restaurant there in Burlington, just as like make some extra money on the sure. side and, you know, work in a restaurant. And so then I graduated with a degree in business management. And I said, I don't think I want to do this. So much to my father's dismay. Yeah. Instead of getting a job in the investment banking industry or going to run the produce company or going to run a business, yeah. I said, I'm going to continue to cook. And so that's when wow. I moved to California. And so I graduated college with this fancy bachelor's degree in business management, and I took a job working the grill for $10 an hour. Ooh, Luckily, I took a job in Ventana, hmm, in Big Sur. For sure. Which is a spectacular restaurant and a post ranch across One the street. One of the best views ever in the history of California, dominating the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, it's spectacular. Yeah. So I was lucky enough to land in a great place there um, for my job making $10 an hour as a yeah. grill cook. Um, and then my college loan started to hit, and I said, this ain't cutting it, right? If I'm going to do this, I need to be serious about it. And so I moved to San Francisco and enrolled in the Cordon Bleu Culinary School. Oh, so you did the Cordon Bleu? I did. Mm -hmm. Wow, good for you. Yeah. Great school. Fantastic, and I worked in... So you did French training in many ways, right? Uh, in many ways, yes. Yes. Huh. In every way, actually. I mean, for it's sure. the Cordon Bleu degree, and then... I worked in restaurants around San Francisco, some spectacular restaurants when I was in the city. Like, then, uh, like who did you work with? Uh, I worked for Plum Jack Group for many years, for sure. Plum Jack Cafe and the Balboa Cafe. I mean, I worked at great restaurants. I worked at uh, Michael Mina. I worked at <laughs> Jardinier. I wow. worked at some, some of the great restaurants in San Francisco at the time in the early 2000s. And then in 2005, I said, I'm out and I moved to Napa Valley, so. And what had attracted you at the time? What was the attraction to Napa Valley specifically? Um, you know, I've always wanted to, you know, have a garden, have a backyard, mm. that sort of thing. And those, you just can't do that in your studio apartment and the mission in San Francisco. So, 
So I said, okay, I'm gonna move to Napa Valley. And it was very fortuitous of me that at the point in time that I decided to move to Napa Valley, uh, I was offered a job position at Trevigne restaurant. Which, dear friends, is literally across the street. So it's a pretty amazing evolution for Nash. Mm. And so tell us a little bit about Trevigne and what was so unique and what you really learned there. Well, when I started there, honestly, I had no idea what- Water is getting warm in these bubbles. I had no idea what Trevigne was. Yeah. I didn't know that it was this Napa Valley yeah. institution. Yeah. I did not know who Michael Chiarella was. I didn't know anything about it. Mm. And so I just started working at this restaurant. Uh, and I started there as a sous chef. Wow. Um, so right almost up there. Uh, well, yeah, I had some experience in, in San Francisco as a sous chef and then I, I was fortunate enough uh, in 2006 to be able to go and work in Italy. So that was really kind of a focusing moment in game changer for my you. career because end of 2006, I left Napa Valley and I went and I lived and worked in Tuscany in Cortona. Oh, and I worked at a place called Il Falconiere which is a Relay and Chateau, the two Falcon. Michelin star. Exactly. Yeah, the Falcon, great place. It's part <laughs> of the Relay Chateau group. Exactly, yeah. and so I had a, an awesome opportunity to, to work in Italy, and then I took some time and just kind of traveled around, ate food, went everywhere that I could, yeah. spent my life savings. <laughs> and and that's the start again. In 2007, I came back, and I was able to take over as the executive chef at Trevigne. Really? Yep. Wow, this is a major deal. <laughs> Because it was a big place. It was a big place, yeah. And what did you, what did you like the most at Trevigne? What was your favorite activity there as an executive chef that no one really at the time was doing in Northern California that you were so unique for? I think you're leading me into mozzarella. Yes, <laughs> we are. I think you're leading me into the mozzarella. Hey, dear friends, I'm looking at something you're going to be seeing shortly because I'm going to have to go behind that beautiful bar and that kitchen. So chef hands me as well some magical gloves so my hands <laughs> can actually shape exactly. la mozzarella. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that's, that was it. So, yeah. well, you did amazing pizza there as well. You did amazing from Osobuco to a lot of great Italian dish. Exactly. I what was interesting when I took over was that everyone had memories of Trevigne from 20 years prior. Yeah. They grew up there. They took their children there. Now they take their grandchildren there. And they had all these recipes that when I took over as chef were no longer on the menu. Uh -huh. And they would say to me, oh, you have to make the rabbit popperdelli. Yeah. Oh, you have to make the braised beef short ribs. Which were amazing. Both the only problem was there's no recipes for these things and they're no longer on the menu. And so I had to speak to our local people mm -hmm. like yourself, yeah. like your wife, like the people that come in and eat at Trevigne once a week, and I had to say, tell me about this rabbit pappardelle. Yeah. What can you remember about it? Because I'm gonna try to recreate it. And so then I had to go back, and I literally rewrote the recipes to try to, to the best of my uh, abilities, recreate some of these classic Trevigne dishes, and at the same time, recreate new dishes that were distinctly mine to have on the menu as well. So I wanted to have a mix of kind of For old sure. and new on that menu so that when people came, they said, this is why we come. And dear friends, I wanna have a toast with Chef Cognetti because those recipes he's just mentioning became even better than the one before. Salute. So sometimes it's better not to have the guidelines, so it pushed you to mm. create the great recipe. So why don't you describe this wine for us? Because you're a great wine aficionado. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this really wonderful Zinfandel, dear friends. We wanted something very historical, truly American, Zinfandel, yeah. to be with Chef because Zinfandel arrived in 1850 in New Jersey. Thanks to the Count of Buena Vista, there's two stories, but one of them is close to where you were born. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So we wanted to go back right to the source. I have to be honest with you, so much about food and wine and eating food and drinking wine is these flavor memories and these aroma memories that you, you taste something, you say, I remember when. Yeah. I was a boy in Burgundy. 
and. And so I have to tell you, when you poured this glass of wine for me, I remember when <laughs> I was a boy and yep. my mother yes. drank a lot of sparkling Lambrusco. Well, maybe not a lot. Sorry, mom. <laughs> But that was her choice. I hope that was you're her watching, wine. Mom. <laughs> that was her wine of choice and still is to this day. But it's great. So honestly, when I taste this wine, and it may just be a visual thing because I open a, you, when you opened a bottle of sparkling wine and then it came out red, I thought to myself, Terry Cognetti. <laughs> yeah. I thought about my mother immediately. And so honestly, when you say, when you ask me to describe the wine, I kind of think about, you know, what we would be doing at my house on a Sunday afternoon. Truly, which wow. is Italian, which is always pasta with red sauce, always red wine. And you know, this fits the bill. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that story. And again, being together as a family, that's what you would do on a Sunday afternoon. Always. Hang out, multiple always. generations together. Always, yeah. You know, the Italian, the French, it's still the same. You know, you go to church, then you have lunch, and then you hang out, and then if you haven't killed each other, you have dinner. <laughs> and in between, you play cards, and you talk politics, sex, and religion. Uh-huh. Because we like all those three topics, right? Usually in that order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and sometimes we finish with sex, too. Mm. <laughs> it's Sunday, for God's sake. We forbid it. So now... Dear friends, we'll see you shortly. I'm gonna come around. So now I jumped on the other side, but we're becoming thirsty because Lambrusco or the Zinfandel is good, but let's do a little white wine just to eventually attract the flavor of the La Mozzarella. Mm -hmm. So, Nash, cheers. Cheers. I'm excited because I've never been on the same side as you. I'm intimidated, <laughs> dear friends. I'm sweating. <laughs> and you know why I'm sweating? As Nash moved on and creating his own business, which is really, really exciting, Tre Posti, he's built an amazing destination. We'll talk about it. And as well, a catering business so he could come anywhere you wish and create some incredible, phenomenal dishes and menus and all of the above. So what we're going to be doing is actually what I have often on the other side of the bar in all the parties you, mm -hmm. you organize. Exactly. So now I'm going to see the secret. I'm going to be part of the secrets. And maybe you will be too. Well, there's no secrets, my friend. <laughs> I don't own the patent. And we're going to teach everybody how to make it. And I'm going to tell you right now, during the pandemic last year, I'm not exaggerating when I say I probably taught 5,000 people how to make mozzarella chips. Wow. Because we started shipping these mozzarella kits across the United States. So cool. And so you could get my, the curd, the same cheese curds that I use, the same salt, the same pepper, the same olive oil, everything that I use. There was a little QR code, QR code on the box where you could scan it. It took you to a video of my smiling bald face and my polished head. But it's, a, it's a nice polished head. <laughs> I must tell you, I don't know if you can see through the camera, but I, it's shining. No I glare. See. Let's I, hope there's I no glare. See, yeah, the sun is reflecting through <laughs> the courtyard here. It's very exciting. And it took you a video of me doing this exact same thing right here. So cool. I've taught so many people how to make mozzarella cheese. I've taught innumerable chefs who have gone on to open their own restaurants and make mozzarella cheese. I've taught innumerable line cooks how to do it. So there's no secret. But I like that concept of open kitchen. This is the same in wine. Anybody can call us and say, could you give me an advice on this or an idea on this fermentation program or aging program? We, we're there to help. And I think that's by emulation, mm -hmm. common emulation that we all progress, right? And I also feel like chances are that somebody who is doing it um, for their first or second time most likely will not do it as good as I will, and somebody who's been making wine their whole life, like yourself, can give somebody advice on how to make wine, but you know that they're not going to do and it as good as you. And you've done that. You probably do that recipe daily. So you can say, go ahead and make it, and I'll show you how, but I still know mine's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, tell us a little bit about, um, well, so I, I didn't want to forget, dear friends, uh, Nash as well does his amazing pizza dough that he prepares and ships. So we will indicate to you 
uh, after this video where you could get not only the mozzarella and all the ingredients through directly Chef Nash, but as well his uh, pizza dough because I've tried it many times and it's maravilloso, <laughs> fantastico. <laughs> yeah, all over the country as well. Very cool. Just not to Alaska, no discrimination, but well, it's too far. Well, you know, you it's know. too cold, it's too far. <laughs> all right, so give us some, uh, some ideas. Look okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'm, okay, I've let's never do been it. So ready. So here's what here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you how how we make mozzarella cheese and why we make mozzarella cheese, and then you and I are gonna eat mozzarella cheese. What? Then I'm gonna step everybody through the process. No gonna... cheese in three months, so I'm gonna oh, have really? to. Well, I'm gonna make an exception. Well, <laughs> to the, you didn't let me finish. Then I'm gonna show everybody the exact steps of how to make mozzarella cheese, and we're gonna eat more, or more mozzarella cheese, and I'm gonna invite you to make mozzarella cheese, and then we're gonna eat more mozzarella cheese. Perfecto! So, <laughs> I'm ready. No for cheese more in three months. This is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm ready to this go. This is back. a reintroduction here. So, first I'll tell you why we make mozzarella, and I'm gonna make it as I'm speaking, okay? Sure. And don't worry, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm doing afterwards. There's no secrets, like I said before. Uh, but I'll tell you a little bit about why I do this and yes. what what makes it such a big deal. Sh shall we try the the base first to sure. see? This is mozzarella curd. Okay. Just just cheese curds. It really tastes of nothing. I wash my hands, don't worry. Mm. We're all very sanitary. I'm never worried. <laughs> mm. So it really yeah, but tastes- it's a very pure curd. Yeah, exactly. And it really doesn't taste like very much because it's really, it's, what the curd is, is just whole milk. Yep. And then we warm it up and we add something called rennet. And rennet mm. is a naturally occurring count, compound. It's found in members of the thistle family, like artichokes and yep. cardoons and celery. That's right. Anyway, I didn't want to get too scientific, but we no, add no, that rennet in there with some salt and vinegar and the milk separates. Hmm. And the curds rise to the top. And that's what we have in this bowl because we filter them off. And the whey, which is the liquid part, like the nursery rhyme curds and yep. right? The whey, which is the water part, we strain out. And then the Italians, what they would do is they would take that whey and they would reboil it or recook it. The Italian word for recook is Ricotta. Ah, ricotta. That's and that's how we make ricotta from. cheese. Mm. Because we're cheap, we're Italian, we don't throw anything away, so it's a byproduct of making mozzarella, right? That's the best way to do it. So, I love it. But I digress. We're making mozzarella here. Today. Well, no, no, but it's great that we know now the true definition of ricotta. Exactly. And do you so, want me to put those sexy gloves? You can, you can sex, sex it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why he handed me those things. <laughs> I haven't used gloves in a while. It's not for your example. For that matter, right. I don't like any of those things on any parts of my body, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> so what I did was I took some of the mozzarella curds and I put them in this bowl. And then I ladled some of this boiling hot water on top. Yeah, of it, okay. Right? And the curds start to melt down. Um, and so... So let's show the meltdown here, dear friends. Can you see that? Very simple. So the water is boiling. Super Boom. simple. You put it here. Super okay. simple. And so the reason that this came about, and I hope you don't mind to tell a little story. Uh, here for a on the opposite. Great. The reason that this came about was because, um, like I mentioned previously, it, I used to work in Italy. Yeah. And so I came back to the United States in 2007, took over as chef at Trevigny. And I was bummed out by the quality of the mozzarella cheese that we got in the United States. Huh. It was not as good as what I was used to getting when I was in Italy. I see. And so at that time, I felt like it was a little bit uh, financially irresponsible and maybe environmentally irresponsible for me to purchase $10 balls of mozzarella cheese that were shipped in from Italy. For sure. <laughs> I'm trying to make money in the restaurant, right? Yeah. No, so, but this is great thinking. I'm so, so I glad. said, okay, I'm going to make my own. Mm -hmm. And this is 2007, so this is what I would call like pre-YouTube. I mean, YouTube existed, but it didn't exist like it does today. Like you can just Google now today how to make mozzarella cheese. Yeah. And you'll get a million videos of how to make mozzarella That's cheese. That's right. Not in 2007. I had to teach myself how to do it. So the process that I'm showing you here right now Hmm. is totally my process. Love it. I, I invented it. And that's it. why it's maybe much better. And you probably won't see. And why see. do you keep putting your hands in two things here? So Tell this bowl is full of ice water. 
And the ice water really doesn't have anything to do with making mozzarella cheese. It's just too. It's got everything to do with my personal comfort. Because this water is boiling. Yeah. And so now it's probably 200 degrees. Oof. And so I'm sticking my hand inside of it. And you don't want to use gloves. And so huh? when it burns my hands, I remove it and put it in the ice water. I see. <laughs> so. <laughs> do you have a bowl like the that gloves, on the side of your bed as you're well? You're still going to get burned. Your hand gets so hot with whoever is <laughs> sitting with you. You're still, you are still going to get burned. The gloves don't stop it. Gina, be ready. You're still. You may never be carished for the next few weeks. <laughs> you're still going to get burned. The gloves don't stop it. Um, you're the, there's no way around it. Yeah. And that's part of the process, actually, of making mozzarella cheese is the, Ooh, is the heat here right now. Look at this lovely, gorgeous. So what I did was I started making mozzarella cheese at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I, we would make it twice a day. This is a big Italian restaurant. We couldn't keep up. So we'd make it once at 11.30 before lunch. Yeah. And once at like 4.30 before dinner. Mm -hmm. And it was good, not, not to sound egotistical, but it was better than anything that I could buy in the supermarket. For sure, yeah. And that makes um, sense. I mean, if you make it right there. Exactly. But it was never quite as good. Sorry, I'm adding a little bit more hot water. When you make it, I'm going to step you through this process and tell you why <laughs> I'm adding more hot water here. But, he wants um, me to burn my hand. I don't know the trick. If you're not burning yourself, you're not doing it right. Gina, we could still kiss, even though I cannot <laughs> touch for two weeks. <laughs> um, so the cheese was good, but it was never quite as good as when I first made it. And I'd be in the back kitchen, and I would taste it to make sure that my seasoning was right. Mm -hmm. And I would taste mozzarella cheese, you know, 10 seconds after it was made. It was still warm in the center. And I thought, it's one of the best things that comes out of my kitchen, and nobody else gets to taste it but me. I'm the only one that gets to taste mozzarella cheese just made. Wow. Made al minuto. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, that's messed up. So I decided, much to the dismay of my salad cook, yeah, I'm sure, that we were going to start making mozzarella cheese to order. Yeah. And so that was in 2007. Which is a big commitment for a kitchen. It's a big, <laughs> for a yeah. kitchen like that, where we're doing, yeah. you know, six or 800 covers. Yeah, it's a yeah. big commitment. Sometimes we would have to hire somebody just to make mozzarella cheese on Friday and Saturday nights. Wow. Um, so I may have a job full time <laughs> soon. But <laughs> another at, one. At that point in 2007, I think that we were uh, the first place and in, in the only restaurant in the world, and maybe the only place in the world that you could have mozzarella cheese that was just made, unless you're friends with the cheesemaker in Campania. There on the day that they're making mozzarella cheese, and you taste it just as he made That's it. That's so cool. There's no other place in the world where you could have mozzarella cheese 20 seconds after it's made. And now, are people following your trend, of course? People are following my oh, trend. It's a big commitment, though. It's, uh, it's pretty intense to do. Yeah, but like I said, I don't own the patent on making mozzarella cheese, so there are other people that make mozzarella cheese now fresh to order, and that's cool. Are you, you know? sculpting here? I'm sculpting. Looks our, like a Rodin. Our ball of fresh oh. mozzarella cheese. Camille and I, Claudel. And looks that's it. Like, that's, that's, all it is, that all, that's all it is. You just saw me make it. You're and squeezing I'm gonna, a little bowl here. I'm going to have you make one, and I'm wow. going to step you through the process. But before you make it, yes. I want you to taste a little bit of fresh mozzarella wow. cheese. So, I know, dear friends, what you're thinking. You wish you were with us, with Chef himself. So I put a little sea salt. I put a lot of cracked black pepper, mm. and then I take some extra virgin olive oil. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm the lucky extra guy. Extra virgin olive oil. Do you grow olives? Do you I, grow olives? Yes, we do. Do you we make do. olive oil? We make an amazing one on Wapo Hill, one across the way at Raymond, and we make uh, yeah at the Oakville Grocery. Because I only use California olives. Oh, absolutely. Mm. I don't import olive oil from Italy. I only use well, California olive oil. Well, we have such an amazing. Olive. What do you think of California olive oil in general? I, I love it. That's all I use. That's all mm -hmm. I use. I mean, I think that uh, we have such a great climate here for grape growing and for olive growing that, I mean, why would I want to use anything but California extra virgin olive oil? I'm with you. So there's little picks there next to you. Eat and drink Charles. local. I'm going to go for it, but first you. Merci. You tell me. Merci. So there's Chef little crostinis if you want a little crostini. But you I know what I may do? I'm going to go for the purity. Go for the purity. First. I'm such a pure boy. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mozzarella cheese. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Who would have thought that 
occurred mm -hmm. could turn into something like this. So here's the thing. People ask me. Unbelievable. Here, I have a little garbage here. Oh, maybe I'm going to do that. Oh. 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 <laughs> so here's the thing. People say, Nash, why is your mozzarella so good? And here's the deal. If you took my mozzarella and you put it in your refrigerator and you came back to it three or four hours of the next day, it would taste just like mozzarella cheese that you bought at the store. Mm. Good mozzarella cheese that you bought no. at the store, but just like mozzarella cheese that you bought at the store. Yeah, the keys. The on reason the spot. that this is good is because you're eating it just made. Yeah. So picture a ribeye steak. Mm -hmm. Grill a ribeye steak, yep. seasoned with salt and pepper, olive oil, off the grill, sizzling, cut in and eat the ribeye steak. Mm -hmm. Take the same steak and put it in your refrigerator. Yep. Come back and eat it for lunch the next day. Still pretty good, but nothing like what it was like when it just for came sure. off the grill. Yeah. And that's the deal with the mozzarella cheese. People say, what's the shelf life on the mozzarella cheese? Zero minutes. Yeah. No minutes. Zero, why, why are you burning your hands for nothing? <laughs> Zero seconds. It should, be a, it should be eaten just as it's made, and that's it. Well, let's have a toast to that. Chef Salute. Nash, family, and his own recipe, not even a family recipe. Mm -hmm. It's your own that you created. It's my own recipe. So, are you ready, my friend? So, I'm ready, but tell us about the crostini. So, because I understand you make the best crostini as well. I didn't <laughs> want to go there, because I'm trying to watch my figure, of course. Yes. <laughs> but um, that's how you serve it. Yes, exactly. That's correct. your trademark. So as far as how when we you do, do it, it in the restaurant, um, we take a and we grill some crusty Italian bread. Yeah. And we put it on the grill and we char it on the grill. And then this we, one. No, not that one. That's actually a French baguette. In your oh, honor, oh. my friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to try. So mm. we take a crusty Italian bread and we grill it and then we rub it with raw garlic and a little bit of fresh rosemary and extra virgin olive oil and we. Slice the mozzarella cheese and we place it on top of that grilled country bread. But that's the trick the is purpose, the rosemary, right? For the purpose of you and I hanging out here. Would you like my friend? Yeah, I'm gonna try with um, a tiny bit though. Okay. It's just to try with the bread because a Frenchman not trying anything with bread does not really work, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna, I should use my hand. Yeah. Might as well. Might as well. You're wearing gloves anyway. Mm. We know it's sanitary. Mm. I agree with you, right? With thin slice, that's the key. Yeah. Mm. You know what's funny is that <clears throat> you asked me before, as as <clears throat> as we were leaning into the mozzarella, you said, "Oh, Nash, you know what was one of the great things about Trevigny that yeah. you can remember, and one of the classic things about Trevigny." And honestly, it's mozzarella cheese and it's short ribs and it's pappardelle and all that sort of thing. But what it truly is is, it was the people that worked yeah. with me for many years and continue to work with me for many years. And it's funny that you're talking about the Cristini because legitimately I've had the same prep guy yeah. for 15 years. Here we go. And so if you think that it's me that's cutting the <laughs> baguettes every morning, uh, <laughs> you're mistaken. Yeah, but he's doing a great job and he's consistent. For 15 years, it's the same guy. And it was the same guy that made the rabbit pappardelle and the same guy that made the oh. braised beef short ribs. And so it was those people that you know, make the big difference. Yeah. And I think that it's probably the same with your businesses and your properties. And it's, you For know, sure. it's, it's got Continuity. a lot to do with terroir, but it's also got a lot to do with, you know, the people yeah. that are hands on there. So. I think it's key, the continuity of it. Well, we Thank should you. have it I was getting glass. so thirsty. Over I know. Here. And <laughs> the beautiful mozzarella, rich, intense, dense, melting in your mouth, with the sea salt and the crostini makes you want to drink wine too. So you know, help it. that's pure companionship. Mm -hmm. so, so are you ready to go? I'm ready to follow your direction. Okay, here I'm going to tell you right now. Dear like friends, I, a catastrophe is about to happen. So, I we're going to step the people at home through wh exactly what I'm doing. We're going to tell everybody exactly how I do this. And so if they want to make it at home, they can because it's a very easy process. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I mentioned before, I probably taught 5,000 people how to make mozzarella cheese and I teach cooking classes on how to make mozzarella cheese. I've taught everybody ages eight to 80 how to make mozzarella cheese. And I'm gonna tell you right now, 
100% of the people that I have instructed how to do it have been able to do it successfully. So do not mess this Are up. Are you putting pressure you're gonna on ruin, me? You've ruined my spiel. Hey, if there's one out of 5,000, it's going to be me, of course. Okay, so the first stage, remember. Oh, I, I got my hands cool now. So I, don't, I learned the lesson. So, Gina, I'm still saving one hand. <laughs> That's good. Actually, I tell people to start with one because why burn two when you can just burn one? I could do a so, lot of things with one. <laughs> so the first stage, what I do here is I call it the gathering stage. Okay. And so what I do is I put my hand in the ice water. And then I put my hand in the hot water and I just take these curds that are floating and I gather them together. When it gets too hot, you remove your hand immediately and you place it back in the ice I water. I hope we see so, well enough. It's a very gentle movement. It's like a caress. It, it's totally exactly right. And honestly, that is the reason why. Was I'm, it an Italian charming lady that taught you how to do that on her stomach? No, maybe, but and you were honestly, caressing her? <laughs> no, but honestly, it's. Women usually make better mozzarella cheese than men Oof, in my experience. Hot. Take it out and put it in the hey, ice water. Baby. Yeah. Baby hot. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. This is serious. So that's at how many degrees? 200, <laughs> probably 200. It was at 212 here earlier because it was boiling. It's probably at 200 here right now. If we talk about senses, though, great smell. Yeah. You yeah. feel the milk. Yeah. So it's very simple. I mean, it's simple yeah. Italian food. There's very few ingredients going on here right now. But yes, you can feel kind of that lactic thing. And so people ask me too. Now, I'm surprised you haven't asked me because you're one, of the, most, you're one of the most intelligent guys I've ever met. And so I'm surprised you haven't asked me. Nash, can't I just use a spoon for the process? That's it. I was going to say, what about using that tool? Because this is like a beautiful something <laughs> upside down that you shape nicely. So and yes. I was thinking. You know, but I know what you're going to say. The answer is yes. The human most touch. Certainly, most certainly you can. However, the first time you do it, you need to feel it with your hands because you need to feel exactly what's happening in there. And so if you just use a spoon, you're only getting half of the experience, and you really can't feel exactly what's happening during this cheese-making process. So I'm going to tell you also right now, as you're doing this, you're not poking it, you're not squeezing it, you're not beating it up or anything like that. And that's good. And in fact, this is kind of a gimmick on my part. I'm yes. going to admit it right now in front of you and everybody. The cheese makes itself. Mm. You and me, <laughs> you and I, are just here to lead it in the right direction. Well, and we accompany the gesture, but it's all about, did you see, friends, how Nash does it? He moves his fingers like a pianist <laughs> and gently caresses it. I mean, I hope... They some of us, it gets us all excited. Exactly. We all got to make mozzarella at home. So Who needs to go to the bedroom? Just stay in the kitchen all day. <laughs> so here, I'm going to tell you where we're at right now. We've got all of those cheese curds gathered together. That's right. That's the goal. one homogenous mass. But if you take a look at it, you see how it's still like a little lumpy mm -hmm. in there? There's still like some little lumps, right? So he and needs it, more time. And if you can see right now, too, I, when I first started this, I would put my hand in there and then I go straight into the ice water. Mm -hmm. Now I'm kind of feeling it and I'm kind of getting comfortable with this. Yeah. And I'm like, this isn't so bad. Yeah. It's not bad. It's like a hot tub in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> put your foot in it and you're like, oh, that's hot. And then you're like, after a minute, you're like, it's not so bad. I yeah, like it. You must have had a good incentive to stay so, in that hot tub. <laughs> so, in that extra hot tub. So, if you're feeling that, yeah. that means that your water's not hot enough. And you see those little bumps that are in there? Yeah. That's why I added that second addition of hot water. Mm -hmm. Because that helps to melt the cheese down 100%. So what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to take that water that we had in there before, and I'm going to add a second addition of hot water ah. to it. And that's what I was doing before. And now the water is very hot because those curds, they were cold when I first started. So they cooled the water down a little bit. Now the cheese curds are hot, and the water's hot. So the second time we put our hands in here, it's going to be even hotter. So don't go in there quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> the second shit, so we, we're through the gathering stage. Yep. Everything's gathered together. The second stage, I call it the pizza cheese stage, because it kind of looks like the cheese that you would take off a piece of pizza. When you take that piece of pizza, and it kind of yeah. stretches out like that, right? And so you can see, too, that on this cheese, it starts to, there's a little black pepper in there. It never hurt anybody, right? You can see that right now, too, it, <laughs> starts, to get, something. it starts to get shiny. 
It, so is, it starts yeah. to get shiny and starts to take on like an elasticity mm -hmm. that's going on there. So when you see that, we are ready. ready. Right? So what you're, what you're going to do, Oof. you are going to do is. I still save one hand. And when you're ready, you're going to put both hands yes. in the ice water. Okay. And then you're going to lift this mass straight out of the hot water. Yes. If it's too hot in your hands, Mm -hmm. You're going to let it fall gently back into the bowl and put your hands back in the ice water. Okay. Do not go running around the restaurant with the melting mass of cheese <laughs> in your hands. Is everybody ready? Ah, it's burning me, Nash. <laughs> right? So both hands in. We're going to take this mass totally out. And then we're just going to let it fall gently across itself. And just kind of tuck in the edges and form a little ball. God. And that's how we do it. So I'm going to mess it up. So I'm you can sure do your this video on your own. was watched after for hours as well. <laughs> the way he's moving his hand around the spokes. So I'm going to mess it up. Right. it up so you can do it on your own. I'm going to come uh, on to this side of you right now. You're going to put both I'm hands honored. in there. And you're going to lift that mask straight out. I'm getting a class at the same time. This is pretty amazing. Totally. So do I go in? My hands are totally frozen now. Both hands nice and cold. And you're going to go in. You're going to lift it straight out. Straight if out. If it's too hot, you're going to let it gently fall oh, back no. in the bowl. No, it's OK. okay. Do okay. I make a little ball? Yeah, exactly. So now you're just going to form a little ball. If J. Alexander was here, the mozzarella would disappear. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm being very gentle. Oh, yeah, man. exactly. Look at that. Now you've got it. There's a lot of softness. I'm closing my eyes and thinking about the extreme moments of my life. So you're ready right now, Jean I'm, Charles. I'm more ready than ever. <laughs> it's, so the, more importantly, the cheese is ready. Yeah. So what you want oh, to do is. Oh, that's why two men. Just drop it back in this bowl here for, for the a whole quick cheese? second. The whole thing. Because we're just going to let it firm up really quickly. Voila. And then I'm going to take it out of there. He saved me. I'm going to finish it with a little bit of ex, uh, sea salt and cracked black pepper. We're going to put some extra virgin olive oil on there. Mm, here. Let me I see. got it oh, for you. Oh, you got it. OK, my friend. Shall I do that? Please, do I the honors. I need to contribute to something. And then I'm going to tell you. That's it? I'm going to tell you that your cheese right now that you just made, first time making mozzarella cheese, by the way. You haven't done this before, right? Never. OK, first well, time I making mozzarella cheese. Well, I was waiting cheese. to do it with the best in the world. I'm going to tell you that your cheese is going to be 99% as good as my mozzarella cheese. That I promise you. So well, please, it's, it's, you need to do it first Maybe this time I'll go with my finger. Because this was your mozzarella cheese that you made. 99% mm. as good as mine, right? I would say. 60%. Oh, no, that's pretty good right there. You're still much higher than I am, of course. Mm. So the first time you do anything in life, whether it's driving a car or kissing a girl, you are not good at it. Tell us about that first <laughs> <laughs> You're not good at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure happily she has married, good I'm memory. a happily married man. We're not going to go there. But was so the your wife your first kiss? <laughs> yes. Yes, she was. Oh, <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> so the first time you do anything in life, you're not great at it. And that's your first time making mozzarella cheese. And I so think what that could it we was have improved? great. Let's compare it to yours over there. So we could do, and this salt, by the way, the sea salt is fantastic. So it's There's not a, a fair Christmas. comparison because this cheese is old now. This, yours is, will be much better than this now. Yeah, but this one was smoother. Well, it's not my first time. Maybe. It's my 100,000th it's, it's how you caress. <laughs> Maybe he has a better touch. Maybe the Italian touch. It's my 100,000th time making mozzarella cheese. So, but for your first time making mozzarella cheese, I would say it's an A+. Yeah. Plus. I would say it's Thank super you. good. And I hope that, you know, just doing this and hanging out here with me right now, do you feel like you could go home right now with Gina and say, honey, let's make mozzarella cheese? Well, luckily, my you hands could do are this, still right? working. They're not totally burned, so I'm oh, accepted yeah, there's home. Clean towels here, my friend. And number two, I totally agree here, with take you. A clean towel. I can't. So, Nash, I'm going to call you Doctor Nash because you're the Doctor Mozzarella, <laughs> and I'm going to call you Doctor Nash Mozzarella. That's your new last name. Um, when you started this amazing place where we are, here we switch glasses. Here. Yeah, switch um, yours. Wasn't it scary? You move away from across the street. Share with us maybe the anxiety, the intensity of starting your own business. And, and today, obviously, you're a great success, but it, it must not have been easy. Share with everyone. I'm going to have one more meanwhile, because I think it's pretty exciting. Well, to be honest, the, 
the whole concept of Tre Posti um, came because we did parties and events at Trevine. Mm -hmm. So we, we already knew that we had that and we could do that. Um, we looked at this space that had been a restaurant for many, many years, 20, 25 years, and had gone through some wonderful chefs, yeah. some world-class sure. chefs. And I thought to myself, of Gong and Puck to yeah. so many others. Joaquin Sweet Charles, Cindy That's Paulson, right. and I thought, why am I so egotistical to, to think that I can open a restaurant here that would succeed? Yeah. So I said, we'll do something completely different, and we're open a uh, catering and events company where we can host weddings, we can host events, we can do winery events, and we can go on the road and we can cook at wineries as well. And so that's, that was kind of the concept behind this business. And how many years ago was that now? 2015. Fantastic. Six it's years. It's been amazing, and you do weddings yeah. every day. We do a lot of weddings. But that's <laughs> exciting because not only you do weddings, but at the same time you do phenomenal catering parties and events and great charities too. You're very involved in that. We're totally involved in lots of charitable events. Um, you know, we do, uh, well, I mean, not last year perhaps, but you know, every yeah. other year we've done tons of charitable events. And I think that the big thing here is that um, we do these big weddings, we do these elegant weddings, but yet, as you well know, I still go and do dinners for 10 people. That's right. We had so one we not one, too long together, right? which was magic. So, I mean, that's kind of the thing. Anywhere between 10 and 800 is my sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, dear friends, if you want to meet Nash, just call him. He does answer the phone, <laughs> and you can book an amazing event. So that's so exciting. Now, Chef, a big question. When you don't make mozzarella and when you're not in the kitchen what inspires you other than food yes um you're not I tasting say, my mozzarella by the way i'm very offended <laughs> i'm very sad what do i do when i'm not in the kitchen um i garden Oh, you do? My house? Of course, yeah. Flowers, fruit trees. We have greenhouse. We have vegetable gardens, flower gardens, the whole thing. And so when I'm not in a kitchen, I still wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and work all day. Wow. Because it's if it's not uh, making mozzarella, it's putting mulch over the tomatoes, you know? Nice. And so that's pretty much how I spend my free time is is at my home in Sonoma. And differently asked, that inspires you, but what is your other passion? Um, as far as food is concerned or just an, as far as Anything life is concerned? Right. Well, I mean, I like Italian sports cars. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beautiful red one out there. I like Italian sports cars. I like, uh, you know, working in the garden. I play golf on Sunday mornings. I wake up Believe it or not, after I do these 200 person weddings on Saturday night, I wake up at 4.30 on Sunday morning and I go and walk 18 holes of golf. Well, this is a great Because uh, What does it do for you? Uh, it kind of keeps you centered and, you know, well, first of all, it's good exercise, but secondly, it keeps you centered and it keeps your blood pressure down a little bit, you know? I mean, it's kind of nice to get out of everything, turn the cell phone off. That's right. And go walk 18 holes of golf and you say to yourself, uh, the only thing I have to worry about right now is how far I am away from the pin. Am I a nine iron or a pitching wedge? I don't have to worry about the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and then and you escape. Get back in the car and turn the cell phone on. You have a hundred emails, but you know, for yeah. those four hours, it's pretty great. Now, besides this amazing dish, what is your other phenomenal signature dish that guests, if they book a wedding or an amazing event, can expect from you that you adore? to do, that is your thing. Well, that's the cool thing about um, this catering business is because I'm not tied into any sort of cuisine. You know, if you open a restaurant, you're gonna yeah. say, here's my restaurant and we do Chinese food, right? Or well, here's my restaurant and we do, you know, small plates and tapas, you know? At this venue, we do everything. We do mm -hmm. everything from barbecue, to Japanese food, to, you know. Requires a lot of skills. Though. Run the whole gamut. And so I think that's really been, you know, when I first started a catering company, I thought to myself, oh, this is gonna be so boring. Cause I pictured catering weddings and I just pictured like, 
you know, wheeling carts of filet mignon and mashed potatoes down That's a hallway. It. You oh, know what I mean? How please boring don't is show that us another life? one of those. How boring is that in it life? Is. And so that's not ex that's absolutely not what it's like at all. Because when people plan their weddings in Napa Valley, they plan dream weddings yes. and they play destin they plan destination weddings. And they say, well, "What can you do for me that's going to be a wow?" Right? And so it's not <laughs> a filet mignon with mashed potatoes and broccoli. And so that's been a great thing and a great challenge and a great creative outlet here in the catering company is that we run the gamut on cuisine. And so if you called me and said, Nash, I need fantastic brisket next week, I've got the smoker out back. I'll start smoking brisket. That's great. And if you say, I'd like a tuna poke bowl for my uh, lunch next week, we'll make tuna poke bowls. So that's, that's the cool thing about what we do here. Right now, now, how many years was that first kiss to your wife? Because you said, <laughs> you said that was your first kiss. How many years have you been married now? Uh, 2017. Ooh, we got married in 2017. That's very recent. Yeah. So let's say you're going to come at your five-year wedding anniversary now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what would be your dream dish that you'd like to prepare for your wife? You're both sitting. She has the wedding dress. You have tete-a-tete uh, -tete uh, in your beautiful uh, garden. Yeah. What are you serving her? You know, honestly, she Unless you want to put your hand in the mozzarella and caress it. Yeah, some caress. To get her mozzarella. very excited yes, that way. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, in many ways, she's a better cook than I am when we're at home because she's a spectacular cook. And so wow. she, when we're at home, she really, um, you know, there's two kinds of people in the world. There's m me, who I've been a cook for 20, uh, 20 years. Right, and so when I'm gonna make a dish, I just go in and make it. Say, mm -hmm. Nash, I, want, I need cocoa van. Yes. I go, yeah, let's go make cocoa van. And I start peeling pearl onions, right? And then there's other people that say, let me do some research on how to make cocoa van. Yes. That's how my wife is. Oh, and that's so great. She does the research and she does it, and then when we're in the kitchen, she'll say like, no. No, that's not how we're doing it. I say, what do you mean? That's how Julia Child does it in the Mastering the Art of French Cuisine, and she says, no, because this is how we're going to do it. And so in many ways, she's a great chef and because she does all that sort of research as to, you know, what this dish. And so we've done a lot of recipe development at our house in terms of what the perfect mole looks like, what the perfect That's birria cool. looks like, what the perfect macaroons look like. And so uh, in many ways, we're so kind of nerdy like that. she's the perfectionist in the family. Yeah. She's pushing you besides. Yeah, exactly. Because typically, I, by the time that, I'm into the cooking, I'll have three cocktails in me at that point anyway. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, back up and she can do the recipe, you know, so. Anyway. I love it. Well, wasn't it fun to be in Chef Nash Kitchen here on Highway 29 in Santa Lina, Napa Valley. So Chef, last, last big statement to everyone. What statement do you want to give to all our friends from around the world about any topic we, you wish it could be after those 16, 17 months now of, of tough times. The world is reopening and about life in general. So this is all yours. So I'm going to say this, and I'm not saying it to kiss your you know what. <laughs> but honestly, um, I am pleased and honored to be standing next to you right now doing oh, this cooking you. class. Thank you. It has been uh many years that you and i have known each other but it's been a short period of time that we've had the opportunity to do these kind of classes where we can get face time with each other and get face time with people and so as far as i'm concerned like doing this right now is a spectacular opportunity and the fact that i can do it with you is fantastic because you sir are one of the powerhouses in napa valley and it's a great pleasure and honor to be just here cooking along with you well so. thank you so much and for me Dear friends, I feel animalistic now. <laughs> I'm going to use my hands and my paws a lot more. And Gina, be ready in the kitchen. I have Chef Nash on my back here. So it's going to be quite amazing. We're going to show the Italians how to do Italian food, right? Yeah, exactly. Chef Nash, thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Such an inspiration. You could see, dear friends, from 12-year-old passion in Pennsylvania all the way to the heart of Napa Valley and true leadership with Chef. Thank you. Come and see us. Salute. Salute.